Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my brief is to talk about music and trauma. Uh, I'm very conscious I'm in a room of people who know far much more about that than I do, more sorts of points of view. So forgive me uh, if I give a personal view uh, of how I think that works. And first of all, a little bit autobiographically, and then I'll try and do something even more risky. I'll try and talk a little science. Uh, so to, lots of dangerous ground for me today. Um, I first became involved in uh, working with music and trauma, in particular in relation to children, totally by accident. Um, uh, in the early 90s, I became involved in human rights campaign to try and stop the genocide in Bosnia-Herzegovina. Uh, I could not watch my friends dying on television, and also I knew the country well enough to know that the way it was being reported uh, was inaccurate. It was not a civil war. It was a Ribbentrop-Molotov arrangement between Milosevic and Tuđman to invade a country. Uh, there were no ancient ethnic hatreds. It was one ethnicity. And there was no Muslim enclave in the center of Europe. Bosnia's Muslims make most European Christian societies look illiberal and boring. So no, all of this was nonsense. So I decided to, to, to offer my services to try and, try and help. Uh, stop the war, basically. That meant traveling to Sarajevo, and I won't uh, embarrass anyone in this room by saying how uh, I got myself there, but I did, by fair means and foul. Um, and I worked there a little bit directly with the Bosnian government. Um, during that time, it became increasingly clear to me that we were failing at the political level. Uh, uh, maybe we could improve things at a later stage, but we were failing to stop the violence. Um, at the same time, as I walked around Saudi of I saw the situation of children. Um, this was a medieval siege of a modern city. Uh, shells landed at random deliberately, uh, to the extent that when people left their houses, they would say goodbye as if for the last time. That's not an exaggeration. It was really a horrible situation, and we never really got the full measure of it because most of the film ended up on the cutting room floor in our media. Um, then uh, uh, food, the food supply, which was technically to be supervised by the international community, uh, was very poorly supervised. Um, water, people had to get from one or two artesian wells, which meant risking the snipers and the shells. The snipers, you had to at every crossroads, the Sadio was in a valley, the Miljaska Valley, wherever you came to a crossroads where you were in the side of the mountains, we used to run at intervals. We would time it at random and run across. Um, the situation for children was brutalizing in every sense. I won't go into the more horrible details. So we did, I said to my old Bosnian artist friends, I've known some of them for years and years, look, can we do something for the kids? There's no school, there's nothing happening. Can we help them somehow? And uh, they said, well, we've been thinking about this for a long time, but look at us, you know, we're walking skeletons. Uh, we would need to do this in collaboration. So we set about uh, a modest collaboration. To, to get some projects going for children. Um, by that time, I'd found my own legal way into the city. The Bosnian army had opened a drainage ditch underneath the airport, and I got permission to go through it. Uh, so I used to go over Mount Igman, um, then run like a bat out of hell from Butmir to the tunnel, and then you would go through the tunnel and arrive in the city. So I had a way in and out. And we worked with children uh, in uh, various activities, mostly creative, composing things, writing things, performing. Um, I used to bring instruments in. I used to bring rucksacks full of percussion instruments. Uh, walking over Igman, I would play tunes with myself as I danced up and down in my rucksack. Uh, and um, uh, so um, we, we, we did lots of things, and, and it spread into quite a big operation. By the end, we even put on the first opera of the war during a ceasefire in Sarajevo, Europa. Uh, uh, and with a load of children in the Sadio Philharmonic Orchestra, or the War Philharmonic as it was then. Um, uh, in fact, we were very proud of that. Um, uh, the uh, president of Bosnia, Izzet Begovic, said that that was a turning point in British-Bosnian relations, and I'm, I'm sure it was a minor role we played, but I, I'm proud of a small role in improving relations in that way. Um, anyway, during our, our, our projects, we were visited by what was left of the Ministry of Health, and a Dr. Cengic came along to one of our sessions and said, made a lot of notes, went away, and said, I'm coming back. So he came back, made a lot more notes. 
Uh, and in the end, uh, he came in in his report and said, we like this as a therapeutic project. We had never used that word. I had only thought I was amusing, distracting the children. I had no specific therapeutic goals. Uh, but he said that we were therapeutic. Um, so um, we, that kind of enabled us to start thinking about ourselves in a slightly different way. And indeed, we had seen massive, inexplicable reactions in our children. Uh, there is a, a thing that happens if you make joyful music with a group of traumatized children, there is a wave of energy that comes and hits you that's almost palpable, almost physical. Uh, I don't know what it is, but it comes and hits you. Uh, we've been noticing all kinds of things, and parents telling us uh, how much better their children were sleeping and all this kind of stuff. So we, we had little anecdotal things happening. I did develop the project further and um, chose Mostar. Um, the reason being that it's an area I knew well. Also, the Washington Peace Agreement had just taken place, uh, which meant that there was largely, not completely, but most hostilities had settled down. Um, and schools were being uh, reopened. And in fact, one of the achievements of the European Union under Hans Koschnik uh, was getting those schools up and running pretty quickly. And so I went to the Minister of Education for the Eastern Canton, where most of the victims were, East Mostar, the part, that part of Herzegovina, and said, look, I know you've got no arts teachers in the schools. Can I have your arts hours in school? I will deliver your national curriculum, but I'll deliver something else as well. Um, so we began in a kind of general outreach. I'd like to give you a little bit of a flavor of that time. I'll show you a bit of a film made by Australian television. This is just after the end of the war. By this time, I'd gone into collaboration with a charity called War Child, um, uh, who had been, at that point, baking bread in Mostar, uh, and were headed towards trying to do something with music. So bread and music seemed to me a very good combination. So we bread and music our way through Mostar.